This will be the second selection from the Oryx Multicultural Folktale Series of Cinderella Stories, written by Judy Sierra. This story is entitled Gieshia. The first complete Cinderella story to be written down over 1,000 years ago comes from China. It tells of Yeshia, a girl who was mistreated by her stepmother and stepsister after her father remarried. Like the heroines of several other Cinderella tales, Yeshian was helped by a magical talking fish. Many parts of the story remain a mystery. We do not know exactly what a cave master did, or where the land of Ohan was, or whether the tomb of two women really existed. The tale is brief, more like an outline or summary than a real story, yet it is difficult to forget. <clears throat> Among the people of the South, there, there is a tradition that before the Qin and the Han dynasties, there lived a cave master called Wu. People called the place the Wu Cave. He had two wives. One wife died. She had a daughter called Yeshian, who from childhood was intelligent and good at making pottery on the wheel. Her father loved her. After some years, the father died, and she was ill-treated by her stepmother who would always order her to collect firewood in dangerous places and draw water from deep pools. Once Yeshin caught a fish about two inches long with red fins and golden eyes. She put it into a bowl of water. It grew bigger every day, and after she had changed the bowl several times, she could find no bowl big enough for it, so she threw it back into the pond. Whatever food was left over from meals, she put into the water to feed it. When Yeshia came to the pond, the fish always swam up and rested its head on the bank. But when anyone else came, it would not come out. The stepmother watched for the fish, but it did not once appear. So, the, so she tricked the girl, saying, Haven't you worked hard? I am going to give you a new dress. She then made the girl change out of her tattered clothing. Afterwards, she sent her to get water from a spring that was very far away. The stepmother put on Yeshian's clothes, hid a sharp knife up her sleeve, and went to the pond. She called to the fish. The fish at once put, it, put its head out, and she chopped it off and killed it. The fish was now more than ten feet long. She cooked it, and when she served it up, it tasted twice, twice as good as any ordinary fish. She hid the bones under the dung hill. The next day, when the girl came to the pond, no fish appeared. The girl ran out into the fields, howling with grief. Suddenly, there appeared a man with hair loose over his shoulders, dressed in coarse clothes. He descended from the sky, and he consoled her, saying, Don't cry so. Your stepmother has killed the fish and hidden its bones under the dung heap. Go back. Take the fish's bones and hide them in your room. Whatever you want, you only have to ask the fish bones for it. The girl followed his advice, and from then on she was able to provide herself with gold, pearls, dresses, and food whenever she wanted them. When the time came for the cave festival, the stepmother took her own daughter with her and left Yeshian to keep watch over the fruit trees in the garden. The girl waited until they were far away, and then she followed them, wearing a cloak of material spun from kingfisher feathers and shoes of gold. Her stepsister saw her and said to the stepmother, That girl looks like my sister. The stepmother suspected the same thing. The girl was unaware of this and went away in such a hurry that she lost one shoe. It was picked up by one of the people of the cave. When the stepmother got home, she found the girl asleep with her arms around one of the trees in the garden and thought no more about it.
The cave was near an island in the sea, and on this island was a kingdom called Tohan. The man who had picked up the gold shoe sold it in Tohan, and it was brought to the king. He ordered all the women of the court to put it on, but it was too small, even for the one among them that had the smallest foot. He then ordered all the women in his kingdom to try it on, but there was not one that it fitted. It was as light as down, and it made no noise, even when treading on stone. He searched fi his search finally took him to the place where Yishin lived with her stepmother, and the shoe fitted her perfectly. She put on the other shoe and her cape of feathers, and she was as beautiful as a heavenly being. Taking the fish bones with her, she returned with the king to Ohan, to, to Tohan and became his chief wife. The first year, the king was very greedy and asked the fish bones for jade and pearls without limit. The next year, the fish bones no longer granted his requests. He buried them by the seashore and covered them with a hundred bushels of pearls, and after a while, they were washed away by the tide. The stepmother and stepsister were struck by flying rocks and died. The cave people buried them in a stone pit, which was called the Tomb of Two Women. Men would come here and make offerings, and the girl they prayed for would become their wife. Some notes on Yishin from China. It says, the relationship between this story and Cinderella was first suggested by the Japanese folklorist K. Minakata in Jinri Gakusashi, 1911. Yeshin was also a subject of R.D. Jameson's three lectures on Chinese folklore in 1932. According to author Whaley, a scholar and translator of Chinese literature into English, we owe the preservation of this very early tale to the Chinese official Tuan Chaingxi, who recorded it in about 850 to 860 AD. Tuan wrote a book entitled Yu Yang Sasu, which included many stories from the oral tradition, some from China and some from other lands. The story of Ye Xie was told to Tuan by a family servant. Li Xiwan, who came from the caves of Yongchao in southern China, near present-day Vietnam. The island of Taohan is a location referred to elsewhere in Chinese history, but its modern name and exact location are unknown. The story as it appears in Tuan's book is reprinted in Chinese characters in the children's book Ye Xian by Ailing Lui. A different Chinese Cinderella tale is included in Wolfram Eberhard's Folk Tales of China, and Chinese folklorist Nai Tung Ting discusses 21 versions of Cinderella from China in The Cinderella Cycle in China and Indochina. 